If we take a look at this ether, and uh, notice we have an R group on either side of our oxygen like that. And if we wanted to name ethers, there are a couple different ways to do it. We'll start off with the common way of naming ethers, which follows the pattern of first naming one of the alkyl groups attached to your oxygen, and then naming the other alkyl group, and then followed by the word ether, like that. So alkyl, alkyl, ether. Let's look at an example of common nomenclature, and we'll start with this molecule here. So if I wanted to name this ether, I would first focus in on what sort of alkyl groups do we have attached to our oxygen. Over here on the left, that's a methyl group, and over here on the right, that's an ethyl group. So we need to think about uh, the alphabet rule, and we know that E comes before M, so we're going to write ethyl before methyl, so it will be called ethyl methyl ether, like that. So let's do another one. All right, so our goal is to name this ether, and uh, we first, of course, take a look at the alkyl groups that we have attached to our oxygen. So on the left here, we recognize this as being a tert-butyl group, and on the right, we have a methyl group. So in, in thinking about using the alphabet rule, right, B comes before M, so the tert-butyl group is going to come before the methyl group in the name, so it should be called tert-butyl methyl ether, like that. So the tert part isn't, isn't a part of the alphabet, right? You're, you're comparing the butyl versus the methyl, like that. Now, tert butyl methyl ether might be the correct name, although that's probably what you that's that's probably not what you will hear this molecule called in the laboratory. Usually, you'll hear this called methyl tert butyl ether or MTBE. So MTBE is a very common organic solvent. It works very well for a number of things, and uh, again, MTBE is what you will hear, but technically, that's not the correct name. Let's look at um, an ether that has alkyl groups that are the same. So if we have this as our ether, we have two ethyl groups um, um, for this one, so we're gonna call this diethyl ether. So diethyl ether, so you can use the prefix of di here. Now diethyl ether, of course, is the, is the famous one. This is the one that everyone thinks of when they think about ethers. Let's look at uh, another way to name ethers, and this is the official IUPAC way of naming them. Now, the common, the common way of naming ethers is, is so common that it's accepted by IUPAC nomenclature, uh, but there is, a, there is an IUPAC way of doing it for more complicated molecules, and that is to name your ether as a substituent, which we call an alkoxy. So we're going to name ethers as a substituent, and then have a parent alkane. So we're gonna call these alkoxy alkanes like that. All right, so what you would do is if you had if you had just this generic ether here like this, ROR prime, you would you would find the larger alkyl group and that would be your parent name. So let's say the R prime group was my was my l longer carbon chain, that would be my parent alkane alkane name like that. And then you would name this portion of the molecule right as an alkoxy substituent on your alkane. So let's look at an example of IUPAC nomenclature. So let's go ahead and um, we'll, we'll name that first one, uh, that first ether that we did uh, a few minutes ago, right? So the very first one we did, when we're doing common nomenclature, right? We call this ethyl methyl ether. All right, so let's go ahead and name it using using IUPAC nomenclature here. So what we would do is find find the uh, find the larger group, and that's going to be my parent name. So my larger group would be this over here on the right. And uh, if we were to number that, right, you could say that's you know number one and number two right here, number one and number two. If you wanted to, you, you don't really have to for this example. Um, but but just to get you thinking about longest carbon chain, right? That would be that would be ethane right there. So we'll go ahead and write ethane as our parent alkane name. And then what do we have coming off of the ethane portion of the molecule here? So what is our substituent? Well, this is, this is the ether portion. We're gonna name it as an alkoxy. And since we have one carbon to deal with, right, we know that our root is meth. And as an alkoxy, it'd be methoxy. So the complete IUPAC name for this molecule would be methoxy ethane, like that. And we don't have to worry about numbers since we have only, only two carbons on our parent chain here. So methoxyethane would be the IUPAC name for this molecule. The common name would be ethyl methyl ether. Both are acceptable names. 
Let's do another one where we have a very similar looking molecule, except in this case we're going to add on another carbon there. So if I'm thinking about my, my parent alkane over here on the right, there would be three carbons for my parent alkane. So if I wanted to number that, it'd be one, two, and three. A three carbon alkane is of course propane. So I go ahead and write propane right here. And I look at my, my ether substituent once again, and I look and see how many carbons I have. And there's, there's one carbon, there's one carbon on the substituent. So once again, it would be methoxy. So I'll go ahead and write methoxy in here. So methoxy propane. Okay, this time I need to put uh, I need to put a number on there, and that group is coming off of carbon two. So the complete IUPAC name would be two methoxy propane like that. Let's do, uh, let's do a much more complicated one that has a little bit of stereochemistry in it. So if this was the molecule that I was trying to name, and let's go ahead and put a, a bromine here like that. All right, so for this one, once again, I have to think about the, the larger group as my, as my parent name. So if I look at those two alkyl groups, uh, the alkyl group on the left looks like the longest one to me. And I want to number to give my substituents the lowest number possible. So if I look over here on the left, I can see that there are four carbons in my, in my larger substituent. So four carbons is going to be my parent name here. So I'm going to call this butane. So let's go ahead and start naming it with butane right here. So this would be butane so far. Now when I number that butane, I want to give the lowest numbers possible to my substituents. So I could start from the left or I could start from the right and starting from the right makes more sense because I have a substituent coming off of carbon one, I have a substituent coming off of carbon two, and then three and four like that. All right, so if I'm thinking about those two substituents, right, let's think about how I would name them. All right, so over here on the right for my alkoxy substituent, this time, there are two carbons in my alkoxy substituent, right, right here. So two carbons would be S, so that would be ethoxy. And ethoxy is coming off of carbon one. So I can go ahead and write that in here. So one ethoxy butane is what I have so far. And I also have a, a bromine coming off of carbon two. So it would be two bromo. So I can go ahead and put in two bromo one ethoxy, and that follows the alphabet, right, because B comes before E, so two bromo, one ethoxy butane, and then we have to worry about the absolute configuration at this carbon right here. So carbon two is a chirality center, so we need to think about how to assign priority to those four groups. So <clears throat> if I think about if I think about the atoms directly attached to my chirality center, first let's go ahead and identify my chirality center. That would be this one right here, right? Four different groups attached to it because there's also a hydrogen going away from me in space. And I think about uh, atomic numbers, right? So I have carbon versus carbon versus bromine right here. So bromine, of course, has the highest atomic number, gets highest priority like that. Now, uh, my hydrogen, of course, is going to get lowest priority, so that's, that's priority number four. And now I have two groups to worry about, right? So I, can, uh, I have two carbons to worry about. Let's go ahead and mark those carbons again. So which one of these carbons is going to get higher priority? Well, it's all about what they're attached to, right? So the carbon on the left is attached to another carbon and two hydrogens. The carbon on the right is attached to an oxygen and two hydrogens. So in terms of atomic number, right, carbon versus oxygen, the oxygen will win. And uh, this substituent on the right would get would get the highest priority. So this would get a two over here. All this stuff over the right would get a two. And over here on the left, this would be a three. So we have, uh, we have one, two, three going around this way, going around counterclockwise, which is the S absolute configuration. So this is S, two, bromo, one, ethoxy, butane for the final name. Let's do one more example of naming an ether here. So let's go ahead and look at one that has a ring and we'll put, we'll put a double bond in our ring like that. And then we'll have our ether over here on the right. 
Okay, so if I wanted to name this molecule, I would think about uh, my two alkyl groups and think about which one is the larger one. And of course, and of course, all this stuff on the left right, is going to be my parent name. And then this is going to be my alkoxy substituent like that. So on the left, I, I, I know what that molecule is. I know that's called cyclohexene from an earlier video, right? So this is cyclohexene as my parent name. So cyclohexene. I now need to number my ring uh, to give my alkoxy substituent the lowest number possible. Right? So if I wanted to number my ring to give my alkoxy substituent the lowest number possible, I should start here and make that 1, 2, 3, and 4, like that. So if I think about what is that alkoxy substituent, it is an ethoxy group, right? Because an ethoxy substituent, because I have two carbons right there. So I have an ethoxy coming off of carbon 4, so this would be 4 ethoxy. And if you wanted to, you, you could put the 1 in here, 1 cyclohexene. You, you could leave it out if you wanted to, so uh, it doesn't really matter. But 4 ethoxy, 1 cyclohexene gives you all the information that you, need, that you need if you wanted to draw this molecule. So that does it for nomenclature of ethers.